what is up everyone mike here back today and today we are not predicting um the start of the afc north instead let's make a cool video today i'm talking about the 2020 cinderella story candidates um so these are teams that maybe have not performed well in the last several years or maybe last year but i think that this year these four teams have a huge chance of success in the 2020 season these four teams are the detroit lions the Arizona Cardinals, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Denver Broncos. All four of these teams did not have success last year, but I think they're set up for a major breakout season, every single one of these teams. So let's talk about why and how I arrived at these teams. We're going to start out with, you know, this is the team that I, I, I'm pretty high on, the Detroit Lions. So obviously everyone knows they lost Darius Slay. That was kind of a little bit of a sketchy. They didn't really trade him for that much to the Eagles, but... They did address that. They signed Desmond Trufant, who, you know, he's had a pretty solid career with Atlanta. Um, Two-year, $21 million deal, four interceptions in nine games last year. That's a pretty good amount considering he was injured a little bit. Um, they also got Jeff Akuda to help replace him. Jeff Akuda, 34 tackles, three interceptions last year in college. on Johnson obviously was injured. He's a, you know, he's kind of um, undervalued. He's a solid running back, but since he was injured, they drafted DeAndre Swift, 35th uh, overall. Uh, he had good stats last year, thir almost 1,300 yards, seven touchdowns, some receiving yards as well. And I think they have one of the most underrated wide receivers in the league. So Kenny Galladay put up stats last year that rival anyone in the league. He had 1,200 yards on only 65 receptions and 11 touchdowns. Compare him to any other receiver and he's just as he leads. And that was with um, some Randy as quarterback. Obviously, Matthew Stafford got injured. And then, you know, that Randy came in to replace him. So the fact that Kenny Galladay still had that great of a season, come on. Matthew Stafford, he's he's one of the he's one of the league's best quarterbacks. Um, he, 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 you know, he hasn't always been in a situation where he might be able to have a breakout year. I think this year he has some pieces surrounding him on offense and defense for him to be able to, you know, prove his worth as a quarterback in this league. The Lions definitely have a good chance of being good this year. Um, I already predicted their schedule. I predicted they go 11 and 5 if everything aligns rightly. They signed offensive tackle Halapludi Vitae, which bolsters their offensive line. Like, they got a decent offensive line now. Their defense, we got Jamie Collins, Desmond Trufant, Akuda, Trey Flowers. You know, like this team, this team's going to be good in uh, 2020. I'm, I'm excited to watch this offense play. And I think their defense, you know, their defense might not be elite, but it's not going to, you know, lose them games that many games. The, the Lions offense is going to help this team out a lot. Um, like I said, Detroit Lions look for them to be wave the wand, the first Cinderella story of 2020. Next up, we have the Arizona Cardinals. So between the Lions and Cardinals, I'm not sure which team um, I'm more confident in to break out. Both of these teams have a, a huge chance. Um, so the Cardinals, we already know they have Chandler Jones. He had about 19 sacks um, in 2019. He's a pro bowler. They got Patrick Peterson, another pro bowler on defense. So everyone knows the Cardinals offense. You know, they obviously revamped that and the Cardinals offense is going to be top of the league. But people are sleeping on this defense. Just because their defense was bad last year doesn't mean anything. You know why? Because they stacked up their defense with some sleepers. They signed two linebackers. They got uh, Lions linebacker Devon Kennard to a $20 million deal. Devondre Campbell from the Falcons to an $8 million deal. Um, they... <laughs> They, David Johnson was just dead weight. They obviously traded the dead weight for DeAndre Hopkins somehow. So they got, you know, one of the league's best receivers uh, to join Christian Kirk and Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald had 800 yards last year. He's not, you know, he hasn't missed a beat, 75 receptions. Christian Kirk had a really surprising rookie season. Um, almost the same stats as Larry Fitzgerald, a little bit less. Um, I expect his production to go up a little bit this year because Fitzgerald, you know, I don't know if he's going to get 75 receptions again. But then we got DeAndre Hopkins, uh, 1,200 yards, 105 receptions. Come on now. And think about it. DeAndre Hopkins couldn't even get that much separation between cornerbacks um, when he was on the Texans because they had, you know, bad offensive line. So basically, Kyle, uh, basically like, it, you know how fast the NFL play happens? Like DeAndre, DeAndre Hopkins, um, he had to rush himself because Deshaun Watson had no time for him to like, get open. Now that Kyler Murray is his quarterback, Kyler Murray can not also scramble to buy time, but the Cardinals also addressed offensive line in the draft, so the Cardinals offensive line should be a little bit better than the Texans, so that could help DeAndre Hopkins a little bit. Um, Jordan Hicks, another good linebacker on that defense. The Cardinals, 
uh, you know, they're in a tough division. But I predicted the Cardinals schedule already. So if you didn't watch, if you didn't watch those, you know, if you didn't see the schedule predictions, go check those out for these four teams because I'm going to spoil it. But the Cardinals, I predicted 12 and four, and that was with them splitting to the 49ers and the Seahawks. I had them losing to the Cowboys and Eagles, and then splitting with the 49ers and the Seahawks. And I still have them at 12 and four. I think they have a good schedule this year from what they're trying to accomplish. They play some easier teams. I think that the Cardinals are going to be a force to be reckoned with this year. That's the second Cinderella story. Boop, boop, boop. Wave the wand. That's number two. <clears throat> number three, the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers could easily um, be a Cinderella story candidate. Now, some people might be like, is it really a Cinderella story? I mean, the Steelers obviously <clears throat> last year weren't horrible. But if you watch their games, it was kind of tough to watch because Ben Roethlisberger was injured. So obviously with Mason Rudolph and Duck Hodges, at quarterback, this team did not perform well. But <clears throat> Ben Roethlisberger comes back this year. So the reason I'm calling this a Cinderella story is because I don't know how likely this is to happen. Nobody knows if Ben Roethlisberger is going to be, you know, his former MVP self. It's tough bouncing back from an elbow injury, especially it's a throwing elbow. Um, he's up there in age. So, you know, the Steelers offense is kind of in question. Deontay Johnson and James Washington, their two and three wide receivers, um, didn't have the best seasons last year because of the bad quarterbacks. They drafted a guy out of Notre Dame. He should help this team immediately. Juju, obviously, is a solid guy. Um, but Ben Roethlisberger is the big question mark. He's basically the fairy godmother in this situation. It's up to him on whether this team can be elite. And the reason it's only because of the quarterback, this Steelers defense is going to be number one in the league. Steelers defense has, you know, it has playmakers across the board. Minka Fitzpatrick made them, you know, top tier. They got a strong defensive line. Joe Hayden, um, TJ Watt, really solid Steelers defense, which is going to help them win games. Um, I have them going only 10 and 6 this year, but that is with Ben Roethlisberger not being the best quarterback. The Steelers have one of the easiest, I think they have the second easiest schedule in the league besides the Ravens. All the AFC North teams have really easy schedules. So lucky them. Um, so look for the Steelers to break out in 2020 as well. And the fourth and final team, no less exciting than the others, the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos can easily be a Cinderella story in 2020. Um, now, they do have a little bit of a tougher schedule coming from the AFC West, but the Broncos definitely bolstered up their team. On offense, they have the best running back room in the league, hands down. Not only do they have uh, two running backs that are good, two starting running backs in the same locker room. Melvin Gordon, Phillip Lindsay, both good running backs. Then they have a strong receiver core. We have uh, Jerry Judy and uh, KJ Hamler, both speed threats. Jerry Judy, a bit more of a target guy. And then we have him, them joining Cortland Sutton on the offense. Really good offense, but similar to the Steelers, we got a question mark at QB. Can Drew Locke be the guy to lead this Broncos team to victories? It's going to be, it's going to be, you know, it's kind of questionable. Drew Locke's a young guy, but this is his year to prove it. He's got, he definitely has the pieces around him on offense to perform. So if Drew Locke doesn't perform well this year, it could be bye-bye Drew Locke. But... If Drew Locke does perform well this year, start building Drew Locke statues because there's going to be some exciting things coming. The Broncos defense, definitely not shabby either. Von Miller headlines that defense, and I'm pretty sure they got some good corners as well in Denver. I predicted the Broncos at 9-7 and seven and getting the 7th seed in the uh, NFL playoffs in the AFC. So like I said, we got the Detroit Lions, the Arizona Cardinals, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and the Denver Broncos. Four teams. All four of these teams are going to perform much better than they did last year. But I believe all four of these teams also have a shot at making the playoffs. In fact, I believe all four of these teams will make the playoffs. You heard it here first. If you're a fan of these teams, get excited because, you know, you're going to be the new Tennessee Titans and you're going to be the Cinderella stories of the NFL in 2020. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys subscribe.